If Cybermorph represents what the Jaguar is to most people, its identity so to say, then Tempest 2000 represents its potential, the flagship for its legitimate strengths and the inverted mirror of the thing most people know it for. The 2000 series was basically Atari taking some of their older classic arcade titles and giving them an upgrade. It may seem detrimental to focus so much on making super ultra versions of games that were still just basic arcade affairs and even considered a little bit outdated by the time they came out, but I really like the idea. And on sheer style, Tempest 2000 proves the worth of a deluxe update to an older arcade game. Because not everything should be some grand adventure, cleanly produced, tons of varied content, there's a lot to be praised for just taking a game that's simple and making it something that feels more expansive, more of a vision. Something that's simple that has its own identity and creates its own world with its concepts, its visuals, its music, whatever its style is. So you progress the wireframes, shooting down the neon lines to protect yourself from the masses of violent shapes, and one hit will kill. You start every level weak, and falling power-ups will each build up your strengths for surviving to the next. Faster shots come first, but after that, who knows, an AI assistant, some bonus points, level skips, screen clears, the jump? The jump is definitely the best one, it's the best defence, especially once the enemies reach your side and start moving along for the kill, there's not really much else you can do. So leaping off the stage allows for clearing your end with safety, at the cost of lowered visibility. But you can still defeat the close-up enemies, but it's a bit of a crapshoot. You don't move per line in this game, it's more like a flowing momentum that can click to the line's edges and shoot down the middle of that same column. But it's precarious and should be a last resort. Try and save your screen nukes for these moments, you have one per level and life. The movement speed is great for accurately hitting targets whilst still remaining fast and constantly moving, which you will need to be. That's pretty much it for the core gameplay, it's simple but it has enough depth and strategy. 2000 mode is the main one with all these power ups but there's also classic Tempest with no power ups or extras and Tempest Plus which is classic mode but with some 2 player co-op or AI assistant like a sort of easy mode. Alongside the 2 player combat mode which is like a gunfight in a space court tennis tunnel. But yeah, the music in Tempest 2000 though, it, it just needs to be said how huge a part of the experience the soundtrack is. It's absolutely one of my favourites ever. It's got such a 90s underground EDM kind of shit, the, the sort of stuff I heard here growing up in the UK all the time back when I was a baby. Ambient tinges in parts that subvert the aggressiveness, the chaotic pounding drums and sporadic abrasive melodies are a catharsis both consistent and diverse with each individual track. And sadly the entire soundtrack isn't on the cartridge, it's missing my favourite track, but they made the smart move of selecting the songs that worked better on the Jerry, the bassier tracks with less ambient parts, although they still work their way in really nicely here. And besides, having two distinct OSTs is a huge plus for any game. It doesn't take away from either, they're still part of the same creative identity, connected, same overall potential experience, even if they come separated. Sure other versions of Tempest 2000 have more of the soundtrack, but this game just feels most at home on an Atari console, and its mechanical movement flows and feels amazing on this more mechanical d-pad. The Saturn version has more music, but it like it doesn't play them stage by stage, it just kind of plays them as like a background playlist, which kind of sort of takes the weight off of it a wee bit. I mean, then, then there's like what's fucking called Tempest X on PlayStation, which I guess you could say is Tempest 2000, but it's Tempest 2000 in the sense that they changed the code and the soundtrack so they wouldn't have to pay, pay any royalties, uh, so the soundtrack sounds a bit more of like a sort of sample pack mix. It's still really good, I still really like Tempest X's, uh, PS1 Tempest's music's still really good, but man it's, it's nothing compared to that original soundtrack dude. And the visuals are the, just the perfect match to this sound, all the warp drive star meshes and swirly menu patterns, the image of a deep space nightclub. You can set the line thickness and they have this interlace option which rapidly flickers the vectors and was really off putting for me. 
But I like this weirdly specific option. It's like something for replicating specific old monitors look, or like a beat-up arcade cabinet screen or something. The vector lines are coloured, deep purples, sheen whites and shifting rainbow tints. Yeah, vector graphics always look cool as hell. Shout out to the, uh, the Vetrex homies. And the way the stars hover in the background has such a great depth. Every motion, movement and shimmering electric sparking particle is fluid and transducing. Its chaos and speed becomes kind of therapeutic. The intense bass lines and hammering drum fills mix with the softer ambient pulses and the ever-present whirling vortex of sounds. You just zone out and play like a machine and it's just a fucking cool sensation. It's a game I could play at literally any time. I could be on my fucking deathbed and you offer me a game of a Tempest 2000, I'ma sit right up and be like, okay, Greg, just give me like 50 minutes, my guy, then we can talk. Yeah, it's a very sensory kind of game. It's visceral yet blissful. Some real arcade crack cocaine type shit. Like, you'll die within seconds, constantly, but once you get that shot power up, the droid or the jump, you're pretty set for the level. It's about staying calm and just making sure you're always on top of yourself. And the lives do stockpile pretty fast in fairness. Although it is sometimes hard to tell power-ups apart from regular bullets and all the explosion dust particles, but you just sort of miraculously get used to it, like your brain begins to subconsciously tell them apart. The frantic guessing game to distinguish what's happening is quite exhilarating. Definitely a game you could find overbearing, it's certainly overkill sometimes, but again, that's part of its hypnosis thing. Stages range from flat lines, simple triangular geometry, to grand arcane symbols, confusing hexagrams, psychedelic shapes, and swooping curves. The small enclosed stages are surprisingly the hardest I find, I guess just because there's less room for movement, and the number pad switches between three different camera angles, and they're all good for different stages and getting different views. And when zooming on to the next stage, you've got to be really careful of the green lines that some enemies place, as hitting them will make you redo that level. It's really annoying at first, but you'll very soon get used to looking out for them as you go. There's just no dumb time here, save for the level entries, and that's kind of part of the reason this game is so addictive. Once enemies are down your side too, it's your biggest threat, besides from just the damn damn electric zapper enemies that need to be shot down almost immediately unless they'll electrocute the whole site that you're on. And yeah, it's impossible to dodge without the jump. They're by far the worst enemy in this game, next to those big white box demon guys, and yeah, I didn't like those either. But at least their bullets can be shot down. There's a lot of variation in the enemies. Some float behind you and then attack, some split in two different speeds. They really are the centre of all this game's chaos, and they all come together to create a spellbinding mess of jagged polygonal swarms, like Tron had a real bad louse infestation. And the tense light pressure of only having one screen clear per stage is great, because you know that you might as well use it at one point, since it refills no matter what. Yeah, there's this great element of surprise too. Certain items like will just zap you straight away to the next stage. And the way the songs themselves suddenly change too really makes you feel like you're going deeper and deeper into this unending rabbit hole of early 90s trance sample packs. Beats and blasting bass lines and sharp contrasting synth pad melodies that give your brain but a mere moment of gorgeous beautiful respite from the swirling game overs, exploding text boxes and distant echoing of the announcers. And the way the bonus stage just comes out of nowhere is fucking amazing, I, I didn't even know these were a thing until like two hours into the game, cause you gotta be playing pretty well for a few levels to get to them. And just like that, from chaotic wall-to-wall -wall action to gentle taps of the controller, steering this gliding entity through the rings of ever-growing speed. The game's chaos is turned down like a dial, and precision of a different, softer sort is needed. The change in tempo to the music is also incredible, one of the absolute best pieces of music on this console, I think, and just generally a song I've been kind of obsessed with lately. This stage just comes and goes so fast, and it's always really out of nowhere as well. It's quite stunning, and it's such a great way to break up this gameplay. The constant yeah sounds in the background are just the oddball cherry on top of all this, like a scenic detour that throws you right back into the fire when it's done. Also, the big like line 
the big strip of bacon <laughs> at the top of the screen is very cool. I can't remember where I saw someone saying it looked like bacon, but I cannot unsee this now. I just keep thinking of Bacon Jupiter. Like, damn bro, welcome to the bacon dimension where we got sick beats and glow sticks and constellation wallpapers. There's a second bonus stage too, this flowing star tunnel to glide along with all these lights churning and some gently pulsing reggae beats back you up. The shapes of the star patterns in the background also morph as the levels progress. They begin to have more empty space and more fixated symmetry. Again, giving this great subtle sense that the space around you is shifting as you progress further and further into this ADD break core fluorescent tinged rave dimension. I mean, Tempest 2000's been more fun than any nightclub I've ever been to honestly, which isn't really saying much as I've only been to 3 and I'm also a massive musical bigot and generally asleep by 3am. Dying in this game just isn't that annoying, you're too hyped, too caffeinated and too alert to care. The dumb time feels non-existent and by the time you game over you had plenty of fair chances, even if it was sometimes a bit hard to prevent, or even near impossible to see or comprehend. But that's all part of the rush and thrill of this game. Besides, there is saves for every 15 or so levels. Yeah, to me Tempest 2000 is just a masterclass of this best kind of basic stuff. And it's basically the reason I've gotten so fucking obsessed with Jaguar stuff in this last year. It's the best example of what's genuinely cool about the Jaguar. Like this little end screen here, where I detect a notable hint of Britishness here, and I will most certainly have a nice cup of tea or, or cocoa or or chlorophyll after this, because fuck me, is this a game you gotta you gotta calm down after playing for the hour ish it'll take you to beat its hundred or so levels. Doing so unlocks the beastly mode, the hard mode with doubled scores. The twisty vortex colour spectrum end screen is a very nice reward, a tasty treat on either difficulty. And it's an even nicer end screen on hard mode too, but uh, no thanks, uh, I think I think 6 cups of tea would probably kill me right now, as much as I wish this was the timeline and where Tempest 2000 was a good CV piece for a military application. So yeah, Tempest 2000 is pretty good I suppose. The visuals are mesmerising, its soundtracks the fucking earth and the addictive game itself wields together all its qualities. It's probably the best known, genuinely great Jaguar game for a very good reason, deserving all its praise and more. Totally awesome Tempest dude, for sure.